This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1465. Why Everyone Should Climb a Mountain by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com and I'm Dr. Neil. Happy Sunday and welcome back to the show where I act as your very own personal narrator and read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online. Now today, I'm featuring an article from Joshua Becker of Becoming Minimalist. This is an author that's regularly featured over on my brother's podcast, Optimal Living Daily. So if you like today's post and appreciate this kind of content, be sure to check out that show too. Again, that's Optimal Living Daily. But for now, let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. Why Everyone Should Climb a Mountain by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. Quote, it is not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. Edmund Hillary. I did not go on my first hike until my mid-30s. I could blame it on the fact that I grew up on the Great Plains of South and North Dakota. But mostly, to be honest, I just wasn't interested. Having never gone, I didn't see the value and always declined when asked. I went on my first hike a few years back while living in Vermont. At the urging of my wife and with my two young kids, we walked a beautiful forest trail on a cool August morning. I carried a small backpack with water and snacks. When we reached the top, we ate lunch together overlooking a perfectly still pond and a scenic Vermont landscape. And I fell in love with climbing mountains. A few weeks ago, my 11-year-old son, my 61-year-old dad, and I hiked Camelback Mountain in Phoenix. Last weekend, I hiked down the Grand Canyon with my son along the South Kaibab Trail. And later this week, my wife and daughter will join us to walk Waterfall Trail in the White Tank Mountains. There are definitely some benefits of living in Phoenix during the winter. Now, just to be clear, by no stretch of the imagination would I classify myself as an expert hiker. Most of our hikes last two hours. And I have no plans to climb Mount Kilimanjaro or walk the Appalachian Trail. But waking early on a Saturday morning to walk three to five miles along a forest trail with lunch in your backpack is a journey I'd recommend for anyone. It is a healthy physical exercise that creates wonderful memories. It provides opportunities to slow down and disconnect. And given the chance, hiking teaches us important truths about life. Life lessons learned climbing mountains. Life lesson number one, many have gone before. Every time I hike, I find myself grateful for those who have gone before and have smoothed a trail for me. And I am reminded in life, we all stand on the hard work of those who have walked before us. Lesson number two, many will come after. I am not the last to walk this trail, climb this mountain, or witness these views. While I am thankful for the work of those who have gone before, I also sense an important obligation to those who will come after, to leave the trail, the mountain, and the earth in better condition than I found it. Lesson three, not all paths have been traveled. Just for fun, I try to build a rock sculpture somewhere during each hike. I look for unusual places where the balancing rocks will remain undisturbed, but still noticed by observant hikers in the future. To accomplish that, I always pick a spot just off the beaten path. Each time, I am reminded there are always new paths to be found in life and new discoveries to be made. Lesson four, sometimes quiet is the best noise. I love the stillness and calm of an empty trail. It reminds me how much I love hearing no noise at all. Lesson five, you can travel farther and accomplish more than you think. Uphill trails only leave two choices, reach the top or turn around. Reaching the top only requires the perseverance to keep putting one foot in front of the other. When life gets tough, I try to remember all we can do is put one foot in front of the other and just keep going. Lesson six, healthy fuel is important. Hiking spurs intentionality in the food and drink I choose to consume. I eat a healthy breakfast. I bring water, thoughtful snacks, and a light lunch if necessary. I choose healthy fuel so my body will function properly during the hike. Plus, there's something that just doesn't feel right about eating artificial foods while being present in the natural world. Lesson seven, pack light. The weight of physical possessions is clearly felt when they are piled on your back. Wise travelers carry only what is needed for the journey. May it be true of me while packing and in living. Lesson eight, choose your steps carefully. While hiking, each step is clearly chosen. I focus intently where my next foot is going to land, sometimes even calculating two to three steps in advance. This intentionality helps me avoid unnecessary harm. 
and I hope the decisions I make with my life's direction will be made with the same precision and care. Lesson nine, age is only a number. I've seen hikers under the age of seven, and I've seen hikers over the age of 70. I'm learning more and more that age only represents the number of years you have been alive. It does not serve as a litmus test for opportunity. Those who decide early in life to care for their bodies and not allow age to limit their potential will not be handicapped by it. And lesson number 10, if you can climb a mountain, you can do anything. While not technically true, the mantra still goes through my head constantly during a hike. Reaching the top of a mountain, any mountain, is an impressive physical, mental, and emotional accomplishment. And it is motivating. It reminds me I can accomplish important things with my life if I dream big and put in the work. Go climb a mountain. You'll love it. You just listened to the post titled Why Everyone Should Climb a Mountain by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. Now, we're here to optimize our health. Listening to these articles is important, but getting personalized help can be a game changer. In the past, it's been difficult to get a clear picture of what our bodies look like on the inside or how to measure what choices are helping and hurting. That's what Inside Tracker was designed to solve. Inside Tracker was founded in 2009 by leading scientists in aging, genetics, and biometrics from MIT, Tufts, and Harvard. Using their patented algorithm, Inside Tracker analyzes your body's data to provide you with a clear picture of what's going on inside you and to offer you science backed recommendations for positive diet and lifestyle changes. Then, Inside Tracker tracks your progress every day to help you reach your performance goals and live a longer, healthier life. Now, for a limited time, you can get 25% off the entire Inside Tracker store. Go to insidetracker.com slash OHD to get your discount code and to start using Inside Tracker today. That's insidetracker.com slash OHD for 25% off the entire Inside Tracker store. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. As the author was discussing age and how we sometimes limit ourselves based on our ages, I thought about this legend here in Southern California, a lady named Hulda Crooks. Hulda Crooks lived in Southern California and she was born back in 1896 and unfortunately passed away in 1997. If you do the math, that means when she died, she was 101 years old, which is pretty amazing. What's even more amazing is that she really didn't become super active until later in life. She started getting into hiking in her late 50s, and then for the very first time, she scaled Mount Whitney at, get this, the age of 65. Now, in case you're not familiar, Mount Whitney is 14,505 feet. She not only did it once, but between the ages of 65 and 91, she climbed Mount Whitney 23 times. And that wasn't the only mountain she chose to climb. She climbed 97 other mountains during these ages, between 65 and 91. One of her hiking buddies, who also happened to be a congressman, was quoted as saying, no mountain was ever too high for this gentle giant. With a twinkle in her eye and purpose in her step, Hulda Crooks showed the world that mental, physical, and spiritual health is attainable at any age. So her story is pretty remarkable, and it really isn't ever too late to just get started, to take that first step and then put one foot in front of the other. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you again so much for being here. Thank you for sharing the show with someone. Thank you for listening every day. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll be back here tomorrow for the Monday show and where your optimal life awaits.